All right, so in this video, I'd like to talk about the nomenclature of benzene compounds. So let's look at some rules for how we can name things uh, based on their relative positions to other halogens or R groups um, or things attached to the benzene ring. So I've got a sample benzene ring up here with three possible ways that you can add something to a benzene ring relative to this guy right here, relative to this little R group that I've written in. So if we have something one carbon away, then it's just called ortho to whatever this group is. If we have it two carbons away, then it's going to be meta to that group. And if it's three carbons away, or if it's on the opposite side of the molecule, then it's going to be para. All right. So let's look at an example where we can use this kind of nomenclature. We don't need to use any numbers or anything like that. Don't need to go about bothering the chain. Uh, uh, bothering. We need to go about bothering numbering the chain. Uh, we have a benzene right here, and we have two chlorines on it. Well, how far apart are these chlorines? Well, let's take one of them and see that they are one, two, three carbons away from each other here. And that means that they are on the opposite side of the molecule, so that makes them pair up to one another. So you don't need to write in dichlor or anything like that, because when you say pair or meta, you're saying that these groups are the same. Uh, automatically when you're writing in one, one type of groups like chlorine or something. So we have para chlorobenzene. All right, now if you've noticed, I have written P in parentheses next to that. That's because you can also just write P chlorobenzene. You don't need to write out the whole word para, that's understood as the same thing. All right, now let's look at a compound where we're not going to be able to use this, uh, this type of system up here. We're going to have to actually number our carbons. So we've got a benzene here with, let's see, this is an ethyl group. We have three carbons. This is a propyl group. And we have CH, CH32, which makes this an isopropyl group. So how do we number our carbons in the chain? Well, we're just going to go about this alphabetically. Ethyl is going to come first, so this is going to be our first carbon. And then which one is closer to it? Well, let's see. This one's two away. This one's also two away. So we're just going to have to go alphabetically again in our numbering. So I, uh, isopropyl is going to be closer than propyl, so we'll name it this way. Two, three, four, five, six. So now we've got our carbons here. So this ethyl group is at carbon one. The propyl group is at carbon five. And the isopropyl group is at carbon three. So when we go to name this guy, we will have one ethyl, and let's see, three isopropyl, and five propyl benzene. So that's the name for this guy, one ethyl, three isopropyl, five propyl benzene. All right, so let's name this guy right here. Well, what do we have? We have two nitro groups. And then we have an NH2, so we have an amine group. So what happens when we have an amine group attached, attached to benzene? Well, it's going to change the name to aniline. So what's going to happen here? Let's see which of these nitro groups is closer to aniline, because aniline automatically is where we're going to start our naming, which you'll see in this molecule, we're going to do the same thing with the OH group, because it's phenol. So we're going to start our numbering here. One, should this be carbon two, or should this be carbon two? Well, since this carbon has the R group attached, let's make it carbon two, since this guy doesn't. And then we'll just go around the chain, four, five, and six. All right, so this is going to be two, five, dinitro, not benzene, but dinitro aniline. All right, 2,5 dinitro aniline. Now, all right, let's look at our last compound here. Now, as I alluded to earlier, we have this OH group attached. Well, because we do, that makes this mo molecule phenol. So we're going to start our numbering right here, one. And of course, since bromine, we have nothing over on this side, we have a bromine right here, we're going to continue our numbering here with this guy being number two. Four, five, six. All right. So what do we have here? We have two, three, 
dibromophenol. Sorry, be a comma. Two, three, dibromophenol. So let's go back and do a quick recap. When we have an R group, if we have one thing, uh, another group, one relative to it, one carbon over, that's ortho, two carbons over, meta, three carbons over, or the other side of the molecule, that's para. So this guy got the name parachlorobenzene, and we weren't able to use this type of nomenclature with any of the rest of these because they all had groups that required us to number them, or they ended up being anilines or phenols or things like that because we had functional groups that changed the name from benzene to something else. So here we had parachlorobenzene. Here we had 1-ethyl-3-isopropyl-5-propylbenzene. Here we came up with 2,5-dinitroanilin. Here we had 2,3-dibromophenol. So that's a quick uh, recap of nomenclature of benzenes and a couple of simple examples.